No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world, and today I am here with porn legend. Is legend okay? I love that. It's so weird to hear. You feel like you've earned it? I was born that way, okay? The okay. moment of conception was legendary Not for just me. a legend, but like a legend in the porn industry. That is a, that's biting off more. No, no. I feel like... I, I feel weird about it because first of all, like, okay, awesome. I'm so happy you guys think of that way, but weird because legend to me is like past tense or people that are older, mm. like, yo man, you're a legend. And that guy's just like, fuck, no, I'm yeah. not that age I used to be. From a rapper perspective, that is a very good way to like subtly offend somebody is by calling a rapper a legend or an OG before yeah. they necessarily should be thought of in those terms. Or I think a lot of times a younger rapper will call someone that thinking that they're going to be complimented by it and then they'll be a little bit like because like, it's past tense yeah it sort of exactly. infers that your best days were ahead were, are behind you well i love to change opinions so yeah it's so fine. on this podcast that's what we intend to do all right let's do it so where are you from uh downingtown pennsylvania okay so yeah. just a regular east coast town or what was that like uh it's like super republican kind of crazy um I don't know what regular is, though. Mm, just regular-ass, middle-of-the-country-ass people. I mean, I'm from New Hampshire, so... Okay, we're in New so Hampshire. Far from Nashua, New Hampshire, right outside the Massachusetts uh, border. I love New Hampshire. I love Massachusetts, too. Mm, it's right oh, it's the best, yeah. Yeah, people are so much realer. Sorry, California. But They're pretty real. It's pretty... Yeah, like, no everybody... No one flakes. Nobody flakes. Right? Well, I mean, you're the one who flaked on my girlfriend because you said your dog had an infection. No, it's straight up. My dog did have it. No, he got bit and then had an infection. And then this time, even today, my other dog got sick. Really? Yes. And you're just here regardless? The dog's just suffering at home? He has a cone this time. A cone? Yeah. <laughs> you should have brought him. I was like freaking out. I'm like, I can't be late on her again. You should have brought him and put him. We would give him a mic and put him in the chair and everything. He has a very good cackle. Really? Yeah. That's cool. I always want to, I hope that at some point I'm so out of sorts in my life that I have to have a cone. Ooh. It might be good because it's just a bullshit deflector, mm. in my opinion. So Doctor, like, I can't stop sucking my own dick. Uh, oh, here's what we're going to do. We're going to put this cone around your head. It'll, it'll be well, fine. Well, if you can do that, then um, I don't think the podcast should be about me right now. I can't suck my own dick. Mm. Is that that rare? I don't know. You haven't done any research into this? No. Actually, I have seen one guy suck his own dick, but I just don't feel like it's healthy. I don't think ingesting yourself is healthy. Well, I'm definitely not going to swallow. Yeah, you spit it out, right? I mean, I'm probably just going to not get into my mouth in general. If just that happened, tip. if I could somehow make it happen, I'm probably going to not. I'm definitely not going to nut in no. my own mouth. That I never terrible. swallow my own squirt. I spit that shit out every time. Really? Yes. But that's like, so that's different than like cum or... I mean, like, everyone says, I don't know. I think I'm the only squirter to admit, like, okay, guys, I'm not going to fuck with you. It is piss. But at the same time, you are coming. Mm. So I just don't like drinking my own pee, but I love everyone else's pee. Really? Yeah. Okay. So let's go back to Pennsylvania. <laughs> where? That, right. <laughs> where <That's weird. laughs> okay. Were you just a regular girl, your, your upbringing, or what were you like? Were, were you, was it clear that you were built to be a legend early on? No, not at all. So I grew up in foster care, and um, I was super obsessed with school and my friends. And I actually went to a Christian school for most of my life. Mm -hmm. um, and I would hang out. Like, on weekends, they'd pass me off to Amish people. And I would do my weekends at Amish farms and stuff like that. So even at like 17 years old, I was afraid for my friends because I was like, you guys are never going to find Jesus. Like, this is very sad. Mm. Um, but you believe that? I mean, not now. I don't no, believe it. No, but at that time, you, it seemed at like that a time, very real thing. A hundred percent completely believed it. I mm. mean, and even now I'll say I'm a non-believer, but deep down in my heart, there is a part of me that's like, mm, well, maybe you're going to go to hell for saying that. Really? You, there you have you that indoctrinated. Yeah. Like if you were to talk shit on Christianity, I'd be mad at you, but I feel like sometimes it's okay for me to. Can I talk shit about Christianity and other religions or why, why <laughs> that of all things? It's just a dumb ideology. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to risk you getting mad at me. Uh, just because I believed it so hard. And you know what it is? It's not even that I believed it so hard. The moments I felt the most love in my life growing up 
was the moment that I was surrounded by people who believed in Christ. And I had moments where I completely lost myself because I loved him in the faith so much. But I don't you think you have to look at what the characteristics of that experience were aside from the belief in a uh, apparently non-existent being? Well, the characteristics of that by itself, I felt were like loving and happiness. It's just everybody that controls it is more like mind control. My mom used to always defend religion to me by being mm -hmm. like, oh, Adam, I've had some of the most meaningful experiences in my entire life at that church, blah, blah, blah. And, and then I got older and I'm like, mom, that doesn't mean anything. You could have a meaningful experience. What, like a bunch of people coming together and bonding over a shared interest? Like you could have that in, at the fucking bowling alley. No, I, I actually, I totally agree with what you're saying because I've had those moments with my best friends where you realize we're best friends and we love each other, you know? Mm. Um, I've been more moved in the average orgy than I ever was in church. Okay. Do I agree with that? Do you I agree with that? I'm, I'm like a, a cunty kind of person, so it depends. If it's an orgy and everyone's sharing each other, I'm not really that happy. Really? Yes. Why? Because you want to be the star of the show? A hundred percent. You could be happier in a gangbang? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. My my best moments in life are in gangbangs. Really? Yes. Wow. That's crazy to imagine. Well, like as a woman, if you have like five to 10 men in front of you and you're like yelling at them and they're fucking you as hard as they can and you're still yelling at them, like, what do you have now, motherfucker? Like, where can you go from there? Yeah. Who feels better? Me or you? Me. How do you want those guys to feel in that moment? Mm, like they're a dildo and they're nothing more than that. <laughs> <laughs> but is that different from how you would treat them in your day to day? Like in reality, you probably want the men in the porn industry to be empowered and happy and, and successful. Well, but listen, then in that like, moment, you just are like, no, you ain't shit. You're just a goddamn dick. No, I, I think that's the opposite for me. Like women run porn and we're the best at our jobs and you make less than me. So I will never date a man in porn because you are beneath me. Um, <laughs> you know, you're going to show up for your money and I'm not going to show up for your money. <laughs> right, yeah. But at the same time, you're still going to wash your dildo and make sure it doesn't get any scratches or bruises. Uh-huh. So. They got to clean those dicks. Exactly. So you're just a young girl in the church. When does it become apparent that you're actually a sadistic, sick fuck? Mm, I think 18 years old. Really? You were pretty good, well-behaved until then? Yeah, I didn't have sex until I was 18. Wow, but you did you do it like right after the birthday? Uh, actually, about three months after my 18th birthday, yeah. Okay. Because I was so crazy. Um, in Pennsylvania, you can't get an abortion unless you're 18. Okay. And I grew up in foster care, and, and my mother was crazy, fucked everything. So I was like, I don't want to have any kids, and I don't want to have it to have anybody tell me that I have to have this child. Uh -huh. So I, on top of religion, never wanted to have sex because I wanted to be the only person to say, yes, you can or no, you can't. So your mom was really promiscuous your whole life and you were really aware of it? A hundred percent. She used to, I just like remember when I was younger, I was like, she would take me into changing, changing rooms at like JC Penny or stupid shit like that. And she would just get so naked and I would cover my eyes and she would be like, why are you covering your eyes? It's just a woman's body. Like I even used to sit in strip clubs with the house mom. So she would dance and I think being around all of that sex actually worked against me. Instead of making it more knowledgeable, it made me fearful to the point where I was like, I don't want to be like this and mm. I don't want to do these type of things. That's weird how as a young kid you can really be like terrified of sexuality. Oh, I, I used to get like upset at my friends because I'd wear polo, like the Abercrombie polo shirts that mm. had the double buttons. I'd button it all the way up to here and i get mad at my girlfriends who would unbutton two buttons. Mm. Because I would just be like, no one deserves to see your chest. Like, that's the Lord's spot. <laughs> like, it was insane. Right. And then... Um, what changed when you were 18? You know, when I was 18, I just had a girlfriend who had a very attractive older brother. And I was just tired of getting made fun of. I had... So I was, I was popular in a sense, but I also had a lot of people who would make fun of me for things I would do in my life. Mm -hmm. um, like so was, what? I, I mean, I was popular because I was pretty, but I was made fun of because I didn't want to go to parties or I was more concerned with school mm, okay. or I actually used to get made fun of because I would go to like try and go on a date. And then one time, like I was 16, this guy tried to like make out with me and I called my, my mom to pick me up and, and I was like, you a phone? yeah, I did. How old are you? 
Um, I, well, I'm, I'm 27 now. 27? Yeah. Oh, okay. Holy so shit. when I was 16, I had uh, I the like Razor phone. I felt like you been in the game for so long. I was thinking <sighs> of you being like closer to my age, even though I guess now I realize that yeah, you are way younger than me. because I worked really hard when yeah, I got it's in. It's because I'm old as fuck, and I just forget that I'm old as fuck, <laughs> and that not everybody <laughs> else is old as fuck. Yeah. No, I got it. 35 is rough. Yeah. It starts setting in around here. This, this year, 27 is the first year I forgot that I was 27, and that's when someone was like, welcome to adult. Hood. Really? Yeah, it's forgetting like that you're the age you are. I'm just constantly having to deal with the, f- the fact that I'm 35 and still just in a young man's game. So I'm yeah. constantly kind of being reminded. But your taxes are paid, so that's like a plus, right? How do you know? I mean, you're 35. I hope your taxes are paid. I mean, they are, are but and get I'm, out. I'm just saying that could be my kink. Tax evasion. <laughs> <laughs> you're into squirting and gang bangs. I'm into tax evasion. Run, I'm running actually from not. The law. Feel free to look into me. I have a very healthy dialogue going on with the IRS. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. But so, yeah, you're 18. You decide finally. Oh, the the, the friend had a hot older brother. Uh huh. And, and I was like, like, I need that. <sighs> no, actually. So the the funniest thing about it is it, it wasn't a, I want that. I just told her like, oh, I'm into your boyfriend. We're on vacation in Florida together. Or boyfriend I'm, or I'm brother? into your brother. brother I'm sorry. Right, yeah. And we were on vacation together. And she actually took pictures of me, which I have to this day, in, like, the most awkward doggy position I've ever been in and, like, naked laying on the bed picture. Mm -hmm. And she sent it to her brother and was like, yo, just let you know, like, she's really into you. Mm. So he ended up texting me right after that, of course. Things my sister wouldn't do for me. Yeah, thinking back on it now, I'm like, this is crazy, but... yeah. She's a really good best friend. That's a really good friend right there. Yeah. A great friend. Right. And um, then I lied to him. I, I was just so tired of being the only person that I knew that didn't have sex and didn't do anything fun. Mm. So he texted me and we just started talking and, and somehow we got on the topic of sex. And I was like, yeah, yeah, like I'm a freak. I've done all these crazy things. Like I really love to get tied up and so on. And he was like, oh, I've never done anal on a girl. And I'm like, oh, well, I'm your perfect girl because I've done anal multiple times. What and, possessed you to lie? Because uh, he's older than me, so I just wanted to be cool. Mm. You know what You know what it is? It's like when everybody thinks you're this person and they know you're that person, you're just so tired of mm. being that way. You just want someone to see you in a different light. So for me, to have someone not only that I found attractive, but someone older than me see me as the person I wished I was versus Mm. who I am was beautiful. And it it, it was like a drug, like talking to him and texting to him was a drug for me. Like I would get off on being like, yeah, like I really want to fuck you and blah, blah, blah. Like I had a guy fuck my ass last night. It's like how how you discovered your your control over your own life in a lot of ways, right? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And then, um, it was like your vehicle to realize your own, like not just sexuality, but your own like potential because you've been sort of crammed into this structured thing. Generic. Yeah. Yeah, You're a generic person until you wake up in my opinion. Right. So then he texted me and was like, well, my parents are out of town. Do you want to come over now? And completely stressed out. And, and I was like, yeah, totally. So I came over to his house and the few things I remember is like flashes to me. I remember laying on his bed on my belly. I remember seeing him shut the door. And then this is really funny. I remember seeing him like stick his hand into like the gin, like the big ass fucking Vaseline jars. Wow. That's hot. <laughs> and just being like, Girls love that. Okay. <laughs> Girls love industrial size lube. Yeah, it was it was really crazy. <laughs> That's so hot. And then he took. We could do F- this for years. F- we'll be fine. We got plenty. Yeah. <laughs> so he took it, and I just remember like it was the second time I've ever seen a dick. He puts it on his dick, and then he tells me to to keep my head forward, and he tied me up with hemp rope, like the kind you wrap around your lighter when you're smoking weed. So this is your first sexual experience. This is my first sexual up. experience. Wow. So he tied my hands. And then he put it in my ass before anything else. Wow. And the weirdest thing happened. I mean, maybe it's not that weird, but I just had an orgasm. Like immediately? Immediately, because my my clit was pushing against the sheets, like 
just so much. And I just remember being like, oh my God, like what's happening? And that's why I say like in a weird way, watching him stick his hand into a bottle of Vaseline was so hot Really? because I was like, oh, what's he doing? What's that for? Where's that going? Oh my God. Yeah. And you had never had these, you had never allowed yourself to have these sort of experiences or feelings so, so much before that? No, I even like barely masturbated. Barely, but you had done it? No, I, I'd never actually used my fingers. I'd like humped a pillow. Oh, okay. So other than that, I was like, oh, this is weird. Right. And so he just sh- like slams in your asshole. You don't remember that hurting? No, it didn't hurt. That was like the crazy thing. Like literally he put his tip of his dick in my asshole. And right after I felt the head go in, I had my very first orgasm and was just like, all right, I'm ready. Wow. And then he fucked my ass, fucked my pussy. And then afterwards we took a shower together and I just like broke down in tears and was like, I'm a virgin. I used to be a virgin. What did he say? Yo, he freaked out. (laughs) I he would too. I freaked would too, out. <laughs> I mean, it's like, there's such a way you would treat a girl who's not a virgin versus a girl who is a virgin. It's just not the same game. So, so I have a fetish now of men like washing my hair and bathing me because of him. Because when I told him I was a virgin, it was like a normal shower. Mm-hmm. And then I told him I was a virgin and he just like took my virginity. He like flipped the script and like was so nice to me. And he started washing my hair and like cleaning my body off and like being so nice. What a guy. Yeah. So I think he was like, oh my God, I just totally like molested this chick. Yeah. He's like, I don't want to get me too. <laughs> 20 years ago. Or exactly. 10 years ago. Yeah. And I just remember all his friends were outside. And I came out and I was like, I'm not a virgin anymore. And they were just, were they hyped too? They are round applause. Wow. That was really nice. You didn't think about maybe fucking all the friends too? I did fuck his, one of his really good friends. Like right after? or Six days after. Six days. Yeah. Was that the first sexual experience you had after him? Or was this just a uh, cascade of... That was my first sexual experience after him. But it's crazy because I really didn't remember it until like four or five years ago. The fucking the other guy. Yeah, I blocked it out. Really? Why? Yeah. Um, well, I think first of all, because he was my first interracial, so he was a black guy. Wow. Which calling it interracial when it was not on camera and it was just a person is pretty amazing. <laughs> well, I mean it is. Like if you want to get the reality, it is. <laughs> only only girls in porn would be like, Yeah, I fucked a black guy. That was my no, first no, time no. doing interracial. I'm from Philadelphia <laughs> okay. and all girls in porn will say they fucked a black guy. Or all girls not in porn will say they fucked a black guy first. They just don't say that to you. Oh. Okay, because I know girls that'll be like, oh my God, I fucked my first black guy. Oh, okay. I don't think I'm ever going to a white guy again. Really? It's yeah. like that? It, like, Tell I don't us know, about the black dick. It's so smooth. <laughs> it's so weird. Smooth. Like, that saying didn't come about for, like, nothing. You know, it's so true. Once you go black, you don't go back. Uh-huh. I mean, I definitely go back and forth, but... It's just like smooth. It's so weird how smooth it is. I don't know. Sometimes I feel like this is all I ever end up talking about on my podcast is just black dick. Yeah, they're amazing. So thank you for helping me with that. They're amazing. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> you know, it's not something that I'm necessarily like, I have no way of interacting with that, you know? Yeah. Like I got all these friends, black friends, never even seen their dicks. Really? Yeah. They mm. just don't do that. Really? They haven't seen my dick either unless they want a porn hub or something. Yeah, I've seen your dick. What would you think? I not smooth, really nice. not that smooth. It's definitely not not as smooth. <laughs> not an eggplant. Yeah. I want to be in a bathroom with you guys. That's all I can say. Let's go. So, I know. We were gunning, but then your dog had to go get an infection, right? I know. It's yeah. terrible. See, she's in charge of shooting my shot for me. I'm not even around. Don't <laughs> expose me. Yeah. No, not, <laughs> not like in charge, but, you know, she knows that if she does like a scene with a girl, that at some point, you know, she might want to try to involve her boyfriend. And so I'm just sort of like at her beck and call. I'm over here doing like five interviews in a day and I might just have to do an emergency house call, go slam some D. So nice. You're so lucky. It's stressful. It's stressful. Yeah. Sometimes I can understand that. Yeah. I have a boyfriend who's like, if you're the best slut, then we'll stay together forever. And sometimes I go out and I literally beg guys to let me suck their dick because I'm like, if I don't suck your dick, I'm not going to be a good girlfriend. I can kind of understand that. How would you characterize that relationship? Because there's probably a lot of people who who would hear that and be like, wow, that's some sick fucking R. Kelly shit right there. Mm -hmm. Well, not really, because he's not like holding you in. He's like sending you out into the world. Yeah. I think it's just like he's just trying to make me the best slut he can make me. Is that like his fetish, you think? Uh, That's definitely his fetish. We're acting like he's not in the room. 
He's not. Oh, just it's a different guy? Oh, okay. He's, he's not showing you right now. I was just assuming it had to be this guy, right? <laughs> yeah, no, it's not. Okay. No, no, it is. It is. On a lot of podcasts, they have like a green room, a waiting room. Like, you uh-huh. know, ours is just now that people could just Well, there's a green around. wall, so it makes sense. Right. That's more yeah. of a filming thing. Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll come back to the relationship, but okay. So you lose your virginity to this guy in your butthole mm-hmm. and your pussy, I guess. But then how did you end up fucking this other friend six days later? Yeah. Is, is this just the beginning of you just sort of becoming a promiscuous young adult? Uh, I, I mean, I definitely think so, but it's weird because so I, I fucked his friend only because he he went back and like banged his ex-girlfriend mm. while I was there and I just got like so pissed I was like well fuck it I'm gonna get my rocks off uh-huh. and then I stayed with him for a really long time I stayed with him until I was 21 and only fucked him and that one other guy so I think um I don't know I think anger can be inspiring and can cause you to be the best you can be so when we broke up out of anger I was just like fuck it I'm gonna go be a a stripper and I'm going to have fun. And I realized that all the goals that I had set previously to that were his goals and none of my own, because when you're, his goals were becoming a biochemist and, you know, finding a job and, and just being the all American typical guy. Did you want to be playing second fiddle to him or did you just sort of find yourself being thrown into that? Um, I mean, it's easy. I've heard a lot of women talk about sort of ending up giving up their own goals because they just end up with a guy and they just sort of forget who they are for a period of time. I think it's like a pretty common thing. I think women get so enamored with with the idea of love that mm. they forget that real love is is no one telling you what to do and to equal equal relationship status. So I think that I just never realized who I wanted to be. I mean, I, I grew up in foster care, had a very crazy life and it didn't stop being crazy until the moment I, I decided to drive away from him and decided that I was going to stand on my own. And I do believe that I, I loved going to school and trying to be a biochemist and all these things. But looking back on it, I'm like, I would have never done any of that. Like people are like, it's so great. You went to college and everything like that. I'm like, yeah, that's great. But it was not my decision. Mm. I would, I would never do that again. Right. It wasn't like your decision or just in retrospect, you just, you weren't thinking straight. No. And I mean, like, was he kind of like forcing you to do that or. I didn't really have any other option. I didn't think of any other options. I was just so enamored with him that I just followed everything he did and believed that he was the end-all, be-all. And I never argued with him until I I started working at a place called PJ Houlihan's. What's that? On the East Coast, it's an upscale version of Hooters. Oh, okay. Um, So I started working there at 18 years old, and I was making great money, like... For East Coast, I made five hundred, a thousand dollars a shift. Wow. Then I got upgraded to bartender, and I started making five a thousand dollars to twelve hundred a shift. Wow! And he would just get mad at me for having to wear leggings to work, oh, and God. and just turn into saying like, he would call me a slut and all these things, but in a nasty way. Mm. To where we would just have arguments on it and stuff like that, until finally I was like, wow, I can't be putting up with this type of conversation any longer. Um, and and ultimately left him. Did you put all these like newfound sexual desires kind of on the back burner and while you were in this relationship with him? So he actually cheated on me once because I didn't have enough sex with him. Really? What yeah. was holding you back? I was so concerned with studying. Wow. Yeah, like he would he cheated on me and I forgave him for cheating on me. And I still to this day will agree that it's mainly my fault. Because when he would ask me to fuck him, I would say, No, I need to study and completely ignore him. Um, because I think I just still was so worried about becoming somebody and, and obviously growing up in foster care, your end goal is to never be in that situation and and never rely on anybody. Mm. Um, so when he showed me like school is the way I believe that wholeheartedly, like there's a pattern to my life. I was taught religion, completely fell for religion and believed it. I was taught school 
completely fell for school and believed it. Now I'm here in in sex work and I've fallen for it and 100% believe it and talk about it. Yeah, so. you seem like an extremist. Like anything you get into, you're going to go 100% into it. 100%. I'm very competitive. Like if you had become like a secretary, you'd probably be like really, really the good at being The best secretary. secretary. 100%. <laughs> you'd be Pam Beasley. I'm just very, um, very competitive. Mm. So even if we're not in competition, I'll find one person within the realm and be like, okay, I'm going to beat you out no matter what. Mm-hmm. So that was my goal. I was like one of the only women in a lot of my classes and I just wanted to be the best. And I was like, fuck everything else. Um, and he made me believe I wanted to be a chemist so bad. So mm. I took it and ran. And then... Um, I was stripping. I loved it. Really? I loved it so much. I would do it right now. Stripping is a drug. You still could do it. You probably still do it, right? No, I can't do it. Why? Um, I actually have canceled a lot of future dancing uh, bookings recently because honestly, like I love to drink. I love to party. So I can't do it because it's just not healthy for me. Mm. Yeah. So you just think you'll inevitably end up partying too hard? A hundred percent. What's your relationship with that now? Are you Are you trying to just not do it at all? Or are you trying to balance it out? Um, uh, if you would have asked me a month ago, I would say balancing it out. If you asked me today then I'm trying to not do it at all mm. just because I feel like evolution of a person is being healthier and, and prolonging your life. So right now I want to be, not only do I still want to be top dog in porn, but I just want to feel great and I want to learn how to be happy without substances mm-hmm. and, and explore myself sober, which is something I never even wanted to do. Mm-hmm. But when it came to stripping, like, Fuck, I got into porn because I was such a crazy stripper. Like, I would go in seven nights a week, love it, do so much cocaine, and I was stripping. I I drove from um, Pennsylvania after stripping there, Mm -hmm. dropped out of college, traveled around the U.S. for one year, um, just having an amazing fucking time, crazy stories, and drove down to South Beach and started stripping at Scarlet's Cabaret. Mm -hmm. And then I was just in there every fucking day. Mm Mm-hmm. And it was a blast. Like some of the best times in my life are moments there. Like movie shit like happened. Like, I, I don't know, piles of cocaine or get leaving a strip club and going on a helicopter. Like it was insane. Like things that people tell you and you're like, well, yeah, I've done that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and it was just so fun. Like even now, if you were to put me back in Florida and South Beach, it's very possible I would live lose myself in that really just because you're able to have so much fun doing it and make a bunch of money while you're at it yeah because i just feel like i don't know every decision i make in life is based on will i regret this and does anybody ever regret having fun or i guess more specifically do people ever regret stripping probably right no no never no no. (laughs) i I mean maybe but i don't know i've never regretted it i mean most of the girls i know are the types who probably wouldn't regret it yeah there's got to be some though i mean for sure it just depends on the path you go on when you're a stripper you know i Mm. think like were you you the hustler that was just scamming the fuck out of these dudes and stealing money out of their pockets and I mean, maybe selling money out of their pockets. <laughs> <laughs> the stripper I mean, code a, of conduct allows for that. No, and here's the thing. So when I was a dancer in, in South Beach, my like go-to game was being like, oh my God, guys, you're from like East Coast or in the middle of nowhere. Like, want to try Molly for the first time? They're like, yeah. So I give them Molly and then they'd just be so happy. I wouldn't have to get naked or even steal anything. They'd just be like, wow. Everything's so beautiful. You look so nice tonight. Here's Man, all this money. If every stripper was trying that cheat code out, then the strip clubs would all be getting shut down. <laughs> no way. Everyone's just so happy. They're, they're making more money. It's great. Yeah, but like as, as a strip, say if I was a strip club owner and I found out that one of my dancers was distributing narcotics to the customers. I might be a little bit like, hey, geez, this, is, this might no, be an no, issue. In reality, you're just like, all right, um, Puma suede, you're just going to have to do this on the deal. Right. And then give me $100 for every 200 you earn. Really? Yeah, that's yeah. what it really is. They're, so they're all just turning a blind eye to all the crazy fuck shit that's going on. 100%. I worked at a club in Florida that was... Uh, supposed to be a no bullshit club where everyone was like, you cannot fuck any of the girls. And when I started making them actual income, they were like, we don't care what you do. I was actually sold at least four or five times where Between they were like, strip clubs? no, they were like, oh, this guy bought your night out. 
you have to get in a car with him and go home Whoa. and we'll give you this money tomorrow. So that, that, that actually happens like they will. And you know, you're having fun, you're partying. So you don't realize the gravity of it, obviously until you look back on it. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, they will sell you out or be like, Oh, well you want to go home with him. Cause you're going to make this amount of money. Right. Yeah. But so you ever have anything like terrible unfold in those circumstances or was it all pretty standard? I mean, like, it depends on what you you call for as terrible. I mean, I've definitely gotten my fights in the day and and walked away from men, but I don't know. I mean, what's the worst thing that that ever happened to me is me getting fucked for hours while some guy's, like, partying, and I was just like, well, I'm over this, but still doing it. Mm. But that's not because they sold me to this guy. It's because I was too weak to say no, Mm. you know? Still kind of a weird position to put your employee in. Definitely, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> but uh, contractor, right? <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> okay, so at what point do you flip the switch and you're like, okay, stripping is not enough. I need to do porn. Um, I never thought that stripping was never enough for me. It was. Uh, I will say, I had a Christmas in 2013 where I was with another stripper friend of mine, and we were out of cocaine, and we were like looking through her trash can for bags to lick them. Wow. And I just remember being like, is this the person I want to be in 10 years? And my mother is a, or was a really bad drug addict. And I just remember thinking after thinking that, like, am I going to be her a hundred percent? Um, so I was thinking then like I should change my life. And I went to work two days after Christmas And my friend came up to me and was like, oh, I know there's a producer here who shoots movies. You should go up to him. And I walked up to him and was like, well, I I have sex with guys all the time. Like, I love this party lifestyle, blah, blah, blah. Um, And he was like, cool, you show up to Bang Bros. And Oh, they got you into it. Okay. Yeah. At at nine o'clock in the morning and do a scene. And you know what I loved best was that it was a nine to five. So I was realistically getting out of stripping because the party was so fun that I couldn't say no. And also the idea of just having a nine to five and being awake in the daytime was so alluring. Because <laughs> you were the type to sleep all day? Yeah, I, I would sleep. So I'd get home. I would leave the strip club at 9 a.m. because uh-huh. they'd have that shift until 9 a.m. Uh, so I'd get home around 11 or 12, hang out with my girlfriend because I lived with her in South Beach for a while. And then I would go to bed and get up around six or seven o'clock at night and be uh-huh. at work at 10 o'clock again. Um, so when somebody told me that you could go be awake in the daytime <laughs> and sleep your nights, this is possible. That yeah. was amazing to me because I actually had uh, often would get depressed, obviously, not only because I was coming off of partying, but you're not seeing the sun. Yes. Fuck you up. Oh my God. I had no idea that that was like, now they, they actually have a name for it. It's like, um, post seasonal or seasonal depression. Yes. Yeah. Seasonal depression. I have that a hundred percent. So if it, if it rains too, a lot or way. anything like that, That's I mean, who I doesn't? California. When I was lived on the East coast, oh my God, I got so depressed during the winters. Exactly. Cause it's just like, everything's gloomy and the pressure pu- pushing on your brain just adds to like the negative chemicals and all that mm. other bullshit. So I was like, okay, I can get up in the morning and go, this is great. And then I did my first scene and, and they booked me for, I think five more mm. and they were all like 8am, 9am and. That just changed my whole life. Yeah. Like people are like, porn isn't a job. I'm like, are, are you sure? Because <laughs> I'm up before you are for your office job. W- were you making much money doing porn compared to the stripping thing? No, I could still make more money as a stripper yeah. than I would in porn, to be honest. Right. But you were motivated. What was it? Was it the idea of like creating this character or was it the idea of just, did you just love the attention or what was it? Uh, I didn't even think about the attention, to be honest. I think it was just the idea of exploring something new while being able to do it in a normal setting. Mm. I think I just craved normalcy at that time in my life. And I just wanted to, even now I say normal because that's still something I crave to achieve. Like what is normal, but I want to be that normal person. Mm. So I think that's just all I really wanted. And then when people started telling me I was good at it, my competitive nature came out and was like, oh, well, I'm good at it. Mm. Cool. Who was the best that that's been important? Who and was the best at that time in your opinion? Uh, Asa Akira. Okay. 100%. I came in the year she won. Oh, okay. 
So, so she was like the hot new girl at that moment. Yeah. Right. Amazing. And then right after her was Bonnie Rotten. Mm. So I think that's why I'm so crazy and I love what I do so much is because my competitor, my main competitor was Bonnie Run. Right. And she pushed you. She was similarly motivated. Oh, she was so bitchy to me. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I like to think I'm a ne- nice person. Um, I've been so, trying to get her to do this podcast for months. She she's kind of really stopped mean. responding. Yeah. She's, she's mean. Nice. Oh, I still have beef with her. Um, I mean, she had to say she was friends. sorry to me. Oh, really? Yeah, because she started dancing with my same agency. Uh-huh. And before he would take her on, she had to say she was sorry to me because she actually called me like a whore and all these like bad names in public uh-huh. because I did triple anal before her. And she's to this day will claim she's done triple anal, but s- find me the photo where she's done it. She's really? only done triple penetration. Wow. Yeah. So if you ever get on that, just be like, oh, have you done triple anal? Because where's the photo? No one's ever called her out for that. I don't think ever in the history of the fucking known podcast universe has a woman ever called out another woman for faking triple anal. Oh, yeah. That's bullshit. Well, I like the dedication to the cause. Yeah. I mean, I felt those dicks in my ass. She did not. So tell me about triple anal. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. What was that? How do you? Okay. Well, maybe we'll even start with double anal. Mm. That's got to be a real challenge. Not so a lot my of first gangbang, I did double anal. Really? Yeah, it just happened. Just it was spur of the moment. Just passion. It was. I just told the guys, I was like, I want to see how far my body can go. That's like when I was younger, I did soccer and track and cheerleading, so I was always very athletic. And when not I was a lot like, of anal sex in those normally. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> but but, but cheerleading, <laughs> cheerleading, I forced myself to do these crazy like acrobatic shit because I wanted to be a flyer before the other girls could be. Mm-hmm. So like that's stretching, you know, it's the same. <laughs> it was similar. Yeah, no, I stretch all the time. Never really thought about <laughs> including my butthole in that in that regiment. Yeah, I don't even know how it happened because I actually the girls would be like, "How do you prepare for the scene?" I'm like, "Uh, I don't. That's the weirdest thing." Yeah. Oh, so you don't do the weird the gummy bear Stretching. diet, the the water. Mm, chill. You, you just you're eating a Big Mac the night before. Yeah, I can actually. Really. I have a GP tomorrow, and we're going to dinner after this. And you've never had any issues with the shit appearing. Or Only anything? one time. Really. Yeah. Was it bad? Oh, uh, it was somewhat bad. Is it like a geyser of shit, like a tub girl type thing? <laughs> I mean, I mean, the guy fucked it out of me. So he went so hard. You're blaming it on him. No, 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 no. I like couldn't stop going to the bathroom, and the guy was like, "Well, let me just try and fuck it out of you, and then we'll try and do the scene." So he took me and put me over to the toilet, fucked my ass so hard that it all fell out. <laughs> Wait, so they weren't <laughs> actually we, filming. This was just in the bathroom. Yeah, because because we filmed a little bit, and they were like, "Every time you're so dirty, we what don't know what to guy. do." Yeah. And like I was like, "Well, I can just not do anal," and they're like, "No, you have to do anal." Uh-huh. And the guy was like really nice and was like, "I can fuck it out of you." What a saint! Oh, he's so nice. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, it was my, really nice. see that that honestly might compete with my favorite story that any porn stars ever told on the show i think was when alina lopez was telling me about how a guy couldn't get hard so she took him in the bathroom and ate his ass for a half hour while texting her boyfriend Ooh, that's nice. i was like this is the most amazing cascade of logic Events. that i've ever witnessed it does work though because you only have so much in like that bottom chamber so if, if you can just get it all oh, out yeah, yeah. you're clean Damn, that's crazy. Yeah. That's cool to know that you're that durable because honestly, like girls, when they talk about doing an ATM, it's like they act like it's this massive event. They have to be so careful. But then when I think about it, it's like I've done a whole bunch of ATM in my life by girls who definitely didn't know they were getting fucked an hour before it happened, you know? Exactly. And they were just sending it. I think that porn, on, I don't know, are these girls that, that are in Some porn that. Uh, so porn actually also just girls opinion, from the bar when i think about it, it was really? like girls just from the bar who were just and i can't even imagine fucking some drunk girl from the bar like i used to just go to the bar and get drunk and just go home with some random girl and that's and an unhappy woman it's just not yeah you could just go home from the bar and just do atm with some guy yeah. you met yeah that doesn't seem like a great idea I mean, I don't Actually, think it doesn't seem like not a great idea. <laughs> I just feel like I need to be I'm careful I'm like, you now. could use my asshole or you could make my pussy sore for tomorrow. Mm, you should use my asshole. Wait, so the asshole doesn't get sore and the pussy does? No, that's why I was like so adamant on doing anal. When I first got into porn, I did two weeks of vaginal sex. Mm. Um, and then I signed with my agents, did one more week. And I actually went in there and we got into such an argument. I threw a box like he was like moving his office and he tried to close the door and be like, you are not allowed to do anal yet. Like 
we, you have no tattoos, natural boots. We're like, we think you're going to be a good deal. And I like picked up a box as he was shutting the door and threw it at him and was like, fuck you. Don't lock me in here. Like I'm a little girl. I want to get fucked in my ass. Someone's going to book it or you can book it and you can choose. Mm -hmm. And I kid you not, three days later, he called me up and was like, so we have a gangbang for you for new sensations if you would like to do it. Mm. And then after that, I just was so adamant about doing anal because I think my vagina has a tilt. It does. Yeah, it does. It, what, so if, if you were to put your dick in there, you sort of feel that it's like an awkward pathway or what? Yeah. So like you can like you feel that there's a tilt to it. But not only that, in porn, like everyone has to open up like a weird way. Uh. So the tilt turns into like a 90 degree angle. So Whoa. I always get sore from vaginal sex. Even in my personal life, I have vaginal sex. I get sore. It's it's sucks so convenient that you've discovered your love of anal i know i think i don't know i never like thought it was going to be scary so. was triple anal was that like tony hawk doing the 900 was that like something that you really had to gear up for no you just sent it i just did it wow i i don't know i think like everyone always asks me like how did you do triple anal it's so amazing and this is when i'm like Guys, let's throw it to the men. Listen, the men made it happen. The, they did it to me. I would really they like to salute the guy in the middle because he's really not touching any female at all. He's just nah. dick on dick on well, both sides. Well, he's got like a little bit of the left side of the rim. If you know? he's lucky. So it's like a bottom and then here and then here. So oh, he's actually okay. got like the whole rim. It's like a triangle thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, but that's why I say like often people are like, wow, that's so cool. Like, congratulations. I'm like, no, that's like... I actually, at the end, the BTS is like me standing up and crying and saluting the men. Really? Because you have to really be enamored with a woman and lose yourself in a scene to not think about what you're doing and to just make her feel pleasure. Mm. So or like it's all be, them. You just got to be bros. Like just you and your bros are just broing down. They were just, all bros. They weren't. They were. No, oh. they were. The, some of those guys aren't even in porn anymore. And that's why I think you don't see triple anal happening as Really? Because it was these guys with a one. It <sighs> was like the same four or five guys that would always do it. Wow. That almost makes me want to get in the game and just find a way. Oh, my God. If you and like three of your buddies want to get in, you'll make a lot of money. Quadruple? <laughs> Quad quadruple anal. <laughs> they must have some massive dicks. Have they even had this much uh, dick to well, work with? Well, two of them with. had like massive dicks. One of them was just like a medium, smaller size. So that's why it was so good. Really? Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's so amazing. It so was. much respect for those men. They should, I do. They it's should, crazy. Like there should be whenever they do like a mural for like firefighters or like police who who've passed away being heroes, they should put in some of those guys too. I definitely don't disagree with you. Nice. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't be the cool porn star I am if the men weren't fucking me. Right. <laughs> yeah. Salute but they them. still make less of me. So. Yeah. <laughs> you sort of like to be able to hold that over your head. The wage gap. <laughs> I do. In porn. We need to attack the porn wage gap. No, we don't. <laughs> it's the only industry women can be the CEOs of. So don't fuck you, you guys. That, that dialogue. Clean your feet first. Okay. <laughs> that dialogue is going to happen in porn at some point. The men I'll, are going to rise up and come I'll be for on the what office. they deserve. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I have to wait for your dick to get high. Yeah, you'll be standing on the highway. That cum shot wasn't with a even sign, worth it. Picket sign. Your yeah. dick ain't shit. Exactly. Hashtag fuck your dick. You know, that's actually what I say. I have men on a regular basis that'll be like, Adriana, you won't ever be able to walk after you get me. And I'm just like, wow, you are an asshole because you have seen me fuck 25 men and walk my happy ass home. And you're telling me that I'm not going to be able to walk after you. What do you mean? I've walked after 25 guys. Like, your dick ain't shit. That's mm. literally what I say. Right. 25, Ben. How was that? Amazing. Really? My knees were very sore. You were on your knees the whole time? Most of the time. Wow. Yeah. How long did that take? Four hours. Four, Four hours, hours and 12 minutes of usable footage. So maybe five hours. Wow. Yeah. And what are you thinking about while you're doing it? Are you lost in the moment or are you kind of like, man, this is sort of stupid at a certain point? And is it mostly vaginal or is it a lot of anal? I prefer anal, so it's always anal because it's for a woman you can delegate what's happening. Oh. Um, no, I think I lose myself. That's why porn's so great. I, I say people think I'm weird for saying this, but when you're five years old and you're on a playground, are you thinking about playing on that fucking playground? Or are you just having a blast? Yeah, you're. It's easy to lose yourself. You're your having kid, a right? fucking blast while you're on those swings and that merry-go-round. So I actually say, like, I am 
a child again at heart when I'm having sex. And it sounds so weird to say, but, but really there's a beautiful innocence that happens when you're entrapped in a sexual emotion with other people. You forget the time and everything around you and you just only have your feelings and, and what's happening at that moment. And mm. that's, what's addictive and that's, what's the best part. Wow. Yeah. That's beautiful. Thank you. There's probably a lot of people out there though, who like, how would you directly respond to people who think that your lifestyle is gross or just weird? And people who think that, that you, you know, women shouldn't be doing this kind of thing with your life. I'm sure you've had to have these conversations many times. What's your personal justification? Um, well, I, I don't ever want to pity anyone, but I definitely feel sorry for them because I'm sorry that their brain uh, puts so many boundaries on them that they will never be able to lose themselves in a moment or even better lose themselves in a person. Um, and and I hope they can experience that. And I also feel really sad for them because not only are they limiting themselves, but I'm sure that they don't want to limit themselves to that person that they are. And, and they would love to try these things because the people that say these comments and try and put me in my place or make me feel bad are the people that are jerking off to my porn the most. Mm. And they are the people that have to hide how they feel. And I can't imagine the pain that they go through every day having to crave something and put it out of their head. So I... I feel nothing but but sorrow for that person. And, and you know, it's very rare you find me being mean to somebody who, who can't experience or understand my job because I only want to open their eyes. And if that means making them watch something stupid as a tease first because they're too embarrassed or too afraid to watch a sex scene, then that's fine. But I don't know. What do you sex have, is learning. What do you have to accomplish in this world? It seems like you've kind mm -hmm. of been pretty close to the top of the industry in a lot of senses. I mean, mm -hmm. a lot of people would say that you've kind of done all that you might be able to do. It's so funny because a lot of every interview is like, what's next? Because you've done everything. I'm like, wow, you know nothing. Really? Because you got a <laughs> lot up your sleeve. Yeah, there's still so much more. When I came into porn about a year and a half in, everyone was like, you're going too fast and you're going too hard and you're not going to have a porn career. There uh -huh. was this idea that if you did things right off the bat, you wouldn't be sustainable. Um, and I'm six and a half years in the industry, still working the same amount. So... Um, I can't tell anyone my fantasies. They just have to watch them. But I definitely have a huge project coming this year. Really? That in, in July that I don't think anyone will be able to recreate. And it's definitely the one of the most ambitious porn things anyone's ever tried to do. Wow. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm never going to be done. And... I just want to make people happy and be happy myself. So definitely. Yeah. What about coming on the escalator? Oh my God. That was super viral. I think I might have, oh no. I think I lost followers because I quote tweeted it. Oh my God. So, okay. So there was like, I you just remember got so happy. Let me bring that up. <laughs> you know what? I have to pee so bad though. Oh, I've been yeah, holding. Yeah, yeah. Can Send I go it. pee yeah, anywhere yeah. right now? Oh my God. Thank you. So anyway, mm -hmm. How was how was the pee? Oh, so good. Really? I actually like the sign that says like, "Don't throw uh, paper towels in the trash" because that's some dumb shit. But I feel like maybe people wouldn't do that if you had toilet paper in the bathroom. We didn't. No. Well, that's definitely an issue. That's not normally how it is. Yeah. <laughs> Are you paper towels? Well, really revealing our. Oh my uh, god! Am I getting someone in trouble? <laughs> uh, guys, you're all fired. <laughs> We're gonna need some toilet paper. Um, <laughs> My fault. But um, how many regular people use the bathroom here? Not a ton. Are you guys like a nice store where you're like, yeah, so you can pee? Or like, no, you didn't buy anything. Get out of here. If you seem nice and you're making a purchase, then we might allow you to urinate. But we don't uh, We don't have that many staff because realistically, it's like we're going to have to have somebody sort of watch the, do the door to the bathroom while you're doing that. Yeah. And like, you, it's in the back here. Yeah. Kind of a security risk in general. So probably no. I would steal toilet paper. No, toilet paper, definitely an important part of uh, any any bathroom really <laughs> anyway so nothing all over that escalator this, uh, <laughs> what happened how did that happen it 
it's so funny because so I looked at the impressions in that on Twitter alone. It was like five thousand or five million views. Wow. But the funniest thing about that is I received uh, five death threats. Wow. Yeah, which I maybe next episode I'll read them to you because they're hysterical. Mm-hmm. Um, I, the craziest things that have happened to me in life are the things that I just act on impulse. And these are not dramatic, crazy things. Four days before I was squirting out of a car in downtown L.A., like hanging out, squirting Why? on the streets of downtown L.A. While driving. Well, there was um, a black man driving and I was in chains in the back seat. Squirting out of downtown L.A. How, wait, how do you find yourself in this situation? Uh, and I like how it's so a black I, man driving. It's no, no, because it's funny because so I, I went to do a scene for Black Raw and the director was like, well, we need to do something crazy because you're crazy. So I have this car. If you don't mind getting in the back seat, we're going to pretend like this guy captured you and you're a man eater. Very true to your form. And I just the reason why I say black man is because. I squirted out the window of his car driving downtown LA and there's all these people like high fiving and, and some people honking and making it a big deal. And as I pull my legs back into his car, I'm like, you know what's the craziest part of this? Is that no one thought that you are a black man driving a white woman who has chains around her neck in a old police car in a Trump state of America. And that's why I say that and say it's so funny. Right. It's, because it's just the reality of it is the craziness. And, and you know, you got to laugh at that. No, yeah. I but that's like, why squirting on the escalator wasn't a big deal. Because four days before that, I literally was doing it out of a car. and I feel like they're going to have a hard time using that footage. No, they used it. It's a big deal. It's everywhere. But I just feel like they could probably get in trouble for doing that. They didn't. No? Okay. No. Well, I guess they, they probably got lawyers that know better than me. For sure. <laughs> for sure. I know that you don't I did know a, shit out of <laughs> <laughs> I did do something for Bang Bros that made it on the news in Florida what and then it? Florida has never done it again in what Bang was Bros. It? it was their public bang, but I was like one of the fifth or sixth girls to do it. And that's just where they just go fucking public? Yeah, they just like literally are like, Hey Adriana, I'm the director. Do you want to fuck in this spot, this spot, or this spot? And I'm like, Oh, I'll fuck in all the spots. All right, let's do it. Right. Um, and then we fucked in between like railroad tracks close to a church. And then like there, we fucked in front of a store where there was like the craziest part like a bum who pulled out his dick and started jerking off in the background where we're having sex. And like the store owner saw the clip because it's huge and got so pissed that Bang got, Bros was like, almost got get in on it. I would have, but he wasn't <laughs> testing. Yeah, that's my weird. other performer was mad. But that's... his dick was bigger than the performer's dick, and that was the funniest part because he, the performer, was like, "Oh shit, your dick's even bigger." Do you think the homeless are often well hung? I mean. That might be their way out of homelessness. Maybe. I don't know. I did give him five bucks for jerking off in the background. Wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah. That's funny. A nice I heard someone talking about uh, having to reshoot an entire intro for a porn because their dog was in the backyard running around and you could like see the dog in the backyard. Yeah, that happens a lot. That happens a lot. Yeah, it does. Oh, okay. I have two dogs. <laughs> that's when I'm just like, mm, do you think anyone is going to care? I, I just don't think know. that's so interesting that you can't even have a dog near it. Although it makes sense to me because it, the, honestly, if I was watching porn and the dog walked in, that would probably kind of ruin it for me. Yeah. Like you you're think? not a part of this. You got to stay out of this. Yeah, that's true. But I mean, my cat will sit right next to us while we're fucking and I won't even think twice about it. Sometimes I'll be like having sex and my dogs will be like right there and I feel them. Really? <laughs> Yeah, it freaks me out. But you I'm, never had the dog jump on top of you and start trying to bang you while you're banging someone? No, never, 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 never. My dogs are so little and they have no balls. Right. I, I don't remember. even think they have that emotion. I used to think it was the funniest thing in the world when I was younger. And we would, we just had this like party flop house, BMX house. And like the girls would come back to the house and they'd just pass out on the couch. And then someone would walk into the living room and the dog would just be humping them. Oh, shit. It was like, you could, you could, you could tell the dog to get off and they, they're not going to get off. They're just yeah. going to hump. Yeah, it's like a control thing. It's pretty typical to all More men. More of a dog so thing. Like, <laughs> all men, mm, you're lumping in dogs with I don't men. know, maybe. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I got you. Um, was there a situation with your stepfather? There was. What was that all about? Explain this to me. Um, so he was like, a, he was never a stepfather, but he was a man who raised me from five until eight and Mm. then again uh, my real mom who i 
got taken out of foster care to live with her and this man for about a year, um, 14 to 15, um, raised me. And he was like so kind, so nice to me. Like, honestly, I don't think it was ever perverse on his part. Mm. Um, he just wanted to be a dad and, and, and be a nice guy. Um, that when I turned, I mean, I had connection throughout my whole life, but then when I was 21 and I had been in porn, we started talking again and he was like, wow, I see what you're doing. Like, I'm not going to comment on it, but I think it's, it's great of you to try and do something you want to do. And that's, that's really cool. And I was actually living in South beach and he lived in West Palm beach. And he asked me if I wanted to go to dinner and slowly through the course of dinner, um, we were like, okay, well I'm here staying at the W you want to come home and hang out at the W with me. Um, had it ever occurred to you previously that you were attracted to him? Uh, for sure. I think as a young girl, no matter who it is in your life, whether they admit it or not, you always look up to them. So attraction, yes, but, but you look up to them. So it wasn't necessarily like, Oh, I thought he was hot. I want to fuck him. It was more like, wow, look at this strong man. Who's so kind and so nice to me. Mm. So with women, I think it's a very blurred line because we all just want to be treated nice and, and be respected. So you know, he, he showed me that and, and was really, really kind to me. And then after dinner, we went back to my hotel room and hung out and he was just like joking around, like, let me put your hair up. Like I did when you were younger. And he started brushing my hair and, and put it, put it in a ponytail. And one thing led to another and we did have sex. But the, the craziest thing about this story is everyone thinks like, oh, did you release this? Did you tell somebody? Is that you can go actually find the news article of not me releasing it. Someone sending a picture that he took of us throughout the night to a news um, cast because he was running for mayor in the town. This guy was running for mayor while banging his stepdaughter. Yes. That was probably not good. Idea. Foster daughter. Foster stepdaughter. Right. <laughs> That's probably, that's a slippery slope, you know, I politics, think like, there's a lot of disinformation campaigns and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Like if you're in politics and somebody knows you fucked your stepdaughter, they're probably going to make sure the world knows about it. Yeah. But it's the craziest thing because why are all politics still so dirty? Because they do so much other shit that is way dirtier than the stuff we've seen. Yeah. But it's like as much stuff as we've seen of Trump, if somebody were to be like, he fucked his stepdaughter, that would probably, that would, that would register. That would seem like a big deal. Yeah, but a foster daughter. Still. It's a little, it's a little different. Yeah. They're, they'll blur it. They'll make it so nobody cares. <laughs> but it's also like West Palm Beach and it's like Florida. I feel like they're a little <laughs> progressive. I'm going to be honest with you. If it's really Republican, right? Yeah, yeah. It's super conservative in Florida, right? But everywhere I've lived in Florida was not like that. Yeah, because there's Miami and like maybe Orlando. Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. 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 I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's crazy too because. um. I was actually just like talking to my dude about this because I had gone on the Pornhub podcast previously. Okay. And I recently reconnected with a half sibling of mine. And I think maybe, maybe for, for me, it sucks because I'm just a very forthcoming person. And I, I think I've gone far in life is because I'm honest and truthful. Um, but maybe it's working against me now. So I went on the point up podcast and talked about that, that situation, but I'd reconnected with my half sister. Who's his daughter. Wow. Um, she banged him too, or no, she, oh. she's, she hasn't gotten any close to banging him, right. <laughs> but she's just really beautiful and really kind and nice. But I was just saying like, she disappeared for a little while. Um, and I was like, maybe it's because I did that podcast and I'm talking about the situation again. I don't know. Mm. Because I also talked about that on the, the Stern show. I heard about And the reason I why I wanted to go on the Stern show so bad is because when he would drive me to school at 14 years old, we would listen to that show. Really? Yeah. I had no knowledge of, of Stern before, even after that. I only, did you want to bang Howard? No. When you were doing the interview, there was a part of you that was like, I want to see what that's Hell all about. Hell no. Yeah. That was the most nerve wracking moment of my life. It was insane. I don't, I don't know why it was so, it's because Howard is so inter, intimidating. He's a very good interviewer. And not only that is, I was like the first girl on his show in years. I was a porn star that he was talking to you besides doing like comical stuff. Really? Um, and then there was a few moments where I had to defend myself against his belittling and really? his he was going notions. In on you a little bit. A little bit. I mean, like everyone wants to think because you're in porn, you have daddy issues or, or you're damaged, but 
the kind thing of a is, shtick. is I didn't have a dad. So I honestly, people like to say, well, you have daddy issues. You didn't have a dad. I'm like, no, I didn't have a dad. So I didn't have daddy issues. Well, that's I, kind of the ultimate daddy issue, isn't it? Not having a dad. No, because if you have never had something, if you've never had it, then why would you miss it? The people with daddy issues are the people that don't get along with them and can't talk to them or something crazy has happened. But as a human being, you're kind of trained to want to have that strong male figure. And I feel like that's kind of what people are getting at. Is that because you, you, you were trained to think that because I wasn't trained to think that and I wasn't told I needed that. But you like need a guy to make a baby. No, because I had God when I was told before, before there was family, I had God. And then after family, all I knew was me. Mm. So you think that I needed that or something, but I've never once thought that. I was just saying it's more, it's kind of understandable why people would think like the, the same but that's people because of their boundaries, but the same people are saying mine. like, Oh, every, every woman who goes into porn has daddy issues. If you were like, well, actually I didn't have a daddy at all. I'm assuming they would say, well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, because of their pre-notions and, and their ideals of society. But, but you don't think that had any kind of impact or on um, how you ended up? No, you I don't. You don't think any of the factors growing up? I feel like having the super sexual mom and then having the no dad thing. Like, these are obviously, like, everything that you have as a kid. Like, I see my dad's temper in me. Mm-hmm. I see my mom's caringness in, in me. You know, there's a little bit, a little <laughs> tiny sparkle of caring. No, I mean... Do I think I'm like my mother? Yes. Do I fear I'll turn out my, like my mom? A hundred percent. But I don't think that anything in my life has drove me to do this besides the fact that I've wanted to do this for my own exploration. Mm. And that's what makes me so aggravated when people talk about porn and being like, oh, well, this issue and this and that and this. And I'm like, no, did you ever think that this is the only industry in the United States where we can come in and be better than you and be our own CEOs. So I came into this industry wanting to have fun safely and I've ended this industry as being my own boss and fuck you because I don't want to be called a bitch for telling men to do something. Mm. So I don't know. I feel, I feel, I feel the opposite and it makes me sad that people think that. Mm. No, I don't think that I was just sort of doing a little bit of devil's advocating. (laughs) <laughs> no, I know, I know. <laughs> I don't take anything to heart. So where are you going out to eat? Um, I don't know. Probably Dave and Buster's. Wow, really? You like it there? I love it there. Last time I was there, it was the, the escalator story, but I actually was like, had a butt plug in my butt, and I was on the, the motorcycle bike, and like, <laughs> I know the manager there, and he, manager there, and he was like, listen, like you can come in again. You just can't have your phone out or like film or anything else ever again. They're terrified that you're going to do something crazy. Yeah. They know about the video going viral, obviously, right? Yes, they do. Cause it's on there. It was in their building. You didn't hear about it from the cops or anything? No, because like, how are the cops going to prove that I didn't rent that location or anything else is wrong besides, um, if there's no one in the thing. background. If they wanted to make an issue out of it, don't you think that they definitely could? For sure. If but you then weren't I... in LA, if you were in fucking Kansas and you did that, holy shit. Maybe I will do it in Kansas. Let's hit the road. All right, let's do it. Let's go. Kansas, here I come. Kansas, is, here it is. We're going to your mall and we're going to nut. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to just jerk off in an alley or some shit. Yeah, but like how many like people do crazy things like that? Like someone told me, someone was sending me death threats. And then another person was like, when you're a, a young kid or a dude, you learn that like you can pee in the grass and stuff like that. Mm. So honestly, what's so wrong about a woman not thinking of anything else but feeling pleasure in that moment? Mm. There, that decision to have fun and to feel good was so pure. And that's the funniest thing about everyone getting so pissed off is because there's no other thought besides just basic human instinct of feeling good. Mm. So that's why it's so crazy. Everyone's so mad because you're just like, wow, like you guys, if you want to give my, my 10 seconds of controversy to the world, then that's stupid because there are so many better things Mm. that you can be wasting your time on besides hating me, you know? Yeah. It's just my thing. Leave her alone. Yeah. Leave me alone. Anybody ever tell you you look like Lori Laughlin? Who's Lori Laughlin? The, from Full House. Oh, I can see that. I can see that. (laughs) I was saying earlier, does anyone ever say you look like Peter Dinklage? Yeah. 
And then my girlfriend told me that's the imp from Game of Thrones. And yeah. I was very offended. No, he's like a, an amazing actor. He really is. And apparently is a big dick. Not a bad place to be. Not a bad place to be at all. No. I got to get him on here. Yeah. Oh, my God. You should. Yeah. And then tell him that I'm going to show up because I just want him to fist my butthole. You want him to fist your butthole? I want him to elbow my butthole. All I'm gonna the way wait until, to the elbow. Well, that's probably pretty fucking small, to be honest. But exactly. I'm going to get the interview done, and then towards the end of the interview, I'm going to be like, so we got a butthole fisting opportunity for you. Take advantage of it. I wonder if he's got a family or anything that might stop him from doing that. Or I wonder mm-hmm. if the family would be cool about it. Mm-hmm. Everybody tag know. Peter Dinklage. Peter Dinklage. Fist my butthole. And me, too. <laughs> <laughs> and you too. Fist my ball. This is my, on fourth, show. This is my fourth interview today. I'm a little frazzled. <laughs> I'm telling Peter Dinglish to fist my butt. It starts getting I weird. I don't mean it. I I'm binary. It is what it is. It could be really hot, though. Especially if you look like somebody, then it's even hotter. Me and him? Yeah. I could tell people he's my little bro. Oh my God, that's great. Or he's older than me. Yeah, but he'd still be your little bro. Right. Yeah. Yeah, my little bro. bro your yeah. little bro. I bet he's never heard that one. Mm, no. <laughs> DP your girlfriend with him. I'm down. <laughs> so hot. I mean, I'm totally down. <laughs> Become a Lannister? I'm oh down. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, definitely. I like it. All right. Well, I appreciate you. We're about to go hop in a fucking limo and go to Coachella. So. Get it done. Let's do it. All right. Hey, it was super nice meeting you. And Thank you. I appreciate it. And uh, maybe we can do this again sometime. Yeah, for sure. Well, I got uh, the ones that I love is when I have the porn stars with my like crazy ass rapper friends. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's when it gets really wild. All right, let's see. I'll, I'll bring you an arsenal. All right, let's do it. I'll just text you like a bunch of guys, like a choose your fighter type thing. Ooh, I like, like I want that. him. I want to know what he's about. Maybe I'll I'll come with like I'll be ready to rap or something. I'll tell I'll them to get tested. Them. Ooh, okay. There we go. Well, now you're just asking for free content. I mean, all right. Well, you can do with the content <laughs> as you want. I'm not, what am I gonna do if I had, if I had a sex video of you? What am I gonna do with them? I'll put it on Twitter. That's true. Yeah, I don't. I don't even have. I don't even have a monetized Pornhub page. Maybe I should though. <laughs> you should. I should still get you to sign a fucking contract before I put that on Pornhub though. <laughs> I, I'm so like legally adverse. I'm like scared of getting sued on this podcast now. Really? Maybe it's because I'm frazzled. I mean, it's the world. No, it's it's not you. It's just the world. Like people are are they want to be a victim and they want to be crazy. So yeah, totally. I'm crazy. All right, That's hey, I appreciate it. Be. Thank you. No Job or Coolest Podcast in the world. Check us out on YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes, and we will be back very soon with more heat. Gang, gang.